The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a viral infection, SARS-CoV-2, took the entire global community by storm, affected so many economies, so many lives have been lost and are still being lost. In fact, the entire global community is grappling to survive this pandemic. So in the midst of all of this, the attention of the scientific and medical community was drawn to this no announcement by the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine when they announced a serious breakthrough of the identification of another viral infection. This viral infection affects several millions of people all over the world. In fact, kills several thousands of people. In Africa alone, kills over 200,000. In Africa alone, over 60 million affected with a combination of these two viruses. And it also took my mother in 2007. This killer disease takes more than 1.34 million lives annually. The older silent killer is called viral hepatitis. The Nobel Prize recognized a true breakthrough. It honored three researchers for the discovery of the hepatitis C virus. So the work by these three awardees paved the way for highly accurate and effective blood tests for the hepatitis C virus. In 1976, a similar award was given to Barack Blomberg for discovering the hepatitis B virus, another silent killer. Hepatitis, from the Greek names, simply refers to liver and inflammation. Chronic hepatitis leads to liver damage, which may progress to cirrhosis and liver cancer. Viral infection is the leading cause of hepatitis. So to better understand this, can we take a journey to understand the liver? Your liver and my liver is one of your, our body's most important organs it cleans toxins from your body and helps you digest food and absorb nutrients. The liver is the largest organ inside the body. In an adult, it is about the size of a football and weighs close to three pounds. It is located behind the ribs in the upper right hand portion of the abdomen. Shaped like a triangle, the liver is dark reddish brown and consists of two main lobes. There are over 300 billion specialized cells in the liver that are connected by well-organized systems of bile ducts and blood vessels called the biliary system. The liver is such an important organ that we can only survive two or three days if it shuts down. If the liver fails, your body will fail too. If your body was to be considered an automobile, your liver will be considered as the engine. Oh yes, that's how important it is. It does hundreds of vital things to make sure everything runs smoothly. Some of the most important functions of the liver include it stores vitamins, sugar and iron to help give our body energy. It controls the production and removal of cholesterol. It clears our body of waste products, drugs and other poisonous substances. The liver helps to make clothing factors to stop excessive bleeding after cuts or injuries. The liver also makes immune factors and removes bacteria from the blood to fight infection. The liver releases a substance called bile which helps the body to digest food and absorb nutrients. Imagine an automobile with a faulty engine and that is a human being with a liver that is damaged. But then, this hepatitis can be caused by many different things. Drinking too much alcohol, trauma or injury, autoimmune disorders, an adverse reaction to drugs, herbal treatments or supplements, or viruses such as what we're talking about today. Viral hepatitis A, B, C, D and E. Now, how can hepatitis virus damage or affect the liver? A healthy liver is soft, flexible, but with chronic hepatitis infection, the liver comes under attack by the virus and it then becomes hardened over time. Now, what disease condition does this virus causes in the liver? It causes the first stage which is called fibrosis. 
After becoming inflamed, the liver now tries to repair itself by forming tiny scars. When the scarring continues, it makes it difficult for the liver to do its job. As the damage continues, as the scarring continues, many scars now come together, they join and they, they form the next stage of the disease condition, which is called liver cirrhosis. With a chronic hepatitis infection, large areas of the liver can then become permanently scarred and nodules may form. Blood can no longer free flow, flow freely through because of the scarred liver tissues. This then causes the liver to begin to shrink and become hard. If cirrhosis becomes very severe, liver failure can then occur. This means the liver is unable to filter waste, is unable to remove toxins, and unable to remove drugs. It can no longer produce the clotting profile necessary to stop bleeding. Liver failure can lead to death. Then the last stage of the disease condition caused by viral hepatitis is called liver cancer. In fact, viral hepatitis B and C are the leading cause of liver cancer. Combined together, viral hepatitis B and C causes the death of over 1.34 million lives annually. In Africa alone, over 200,000 lives die every year. In fact, about four people die every second. Recognizing the importance of this silent killer, the WHO set a viral hepatitis elimination goal by 2030, whereby about 194 member countries signed up to the elimination target and goals, including your country. Already, because of what these three researchers have done, they ran new blood tests and drugs for these deadly diseases, and it has saved so many millions of lives. But for many of us in many most, most countries, the celebration of this breakthrough is bittersweet. For some of us, the revolution in diagnosis and treatment remains a distant dream. Over 325 million people that are living with hepatitis globally, like this population of the United States of America, yet 95% of those who have viral hepatitis don't even know it. And in most countries, including my own, the vast majority of those who are sick are not getting diagnosed. For those who even come to the hospital, they are misdiagnosed by some health workers. And for some people, they are treated when it is too late. Why is this so? Probably because of low awareness among the general public, even among healthcare providers. It characterizes a silent killer in the world. In most of our com communities in Africa, cultural practices such as scarification, circumcision, uvulectomy, tribal marks, and weak healthcare systems such as poor screening of blood for transfusion, unprotected sexual intercourse with infected people, or even transmission of murder to baby, are the drivers of these silent killers in our communities. In most of Africa, majority of the over 60 million patients that are living with hepatitis cannot even afford the cost of diagnosis and treatment. Only very few countries have health insurance that provides testing and treatment, while majority of people lack spent out of pocket for diagnosis and treatment. Due to the silent nature of its effect on the liver, majority of people living with this disease are unaware of the damaging effects of the task on the liver until it is too late. One of these was my mother. None of us knew that she had it. Even though we took her to the hospital several times over and over again, each time her eyes turned yellow. The doctors would dismiss it and they prescribed painkillers and give her treatments for either malaria or typhoid and ask us to go. 15 years after the symptoms started, she was diagnosed with end-stage liver cancer caused by hepatitis. It was too late to save her. It doesn't have to be this way. Like hepatitis C, hepatitis B can be detected even in people who exhibit no symptoms. Hepatitis B infection is preventable with vaccinations and treatable if caught early. People living with hepatitis should not be left to their own fates. We have the means to stop this silent killer. We can test those at risk, provide vaccinations at birth, and make hepatitis drugs available and affordable. The global response to HIV and now COVID-19 has shown us what can be achieved when government, civil society, international organizations, and private sector work together with a common goal. In fact, 
Unlocking the mystery of hepatitis C was a towering achievement. But the next essential step is to ensure that this discovery reaches its potential to alleviate the suffering and save the lives of millions of people in countries, including mine. It is my hope that while we we'll survive the COVID-19 pandemic, all efforts should be put in place to accelerate the WHO goals of eliminating viral hepatitis by 2030.